Okay guys, next up we're going to be looking at coding the enemy select and actually the loot select as well. So these are actually two quite small pieces of code. So we're going to just sort of get on with it and I'll explain what each one does as we go. Um, if you've still got this piece of code from last time where we tested that the hero select worked, just get rid of that because we don't need it for the time being. We'll be using that a little bit light later on. So we're going to define two more functions today. And one of them is going to be called enemy select. And you might have noticed beforehand we've been using these brackets, and you can see there's nothing in these brackets when we've been using them. Um, classes have been objects written in them, but for all other functions, there's nothing in them. When we need to pass something into a function for it to use, um, we actually need to write the names of the things we want in there. So we're going to be selecting enemies. So in order to select the enemies, the function will need to know what the three different enemies are, or however many en enemies you've got. So I've got these three here, Goblin, Bat and Troll. So in order for this to work, I need to write in the three, these are called arguments. Okay, just like that. So I've got my three different arguments there, which I've put into my function. It basically means that this function will look at these classes when selecting a random enemy, which is what we want it to do. Now, what we're going to do next is create a list. So in Python, we have different variables like we have here. So this equals this, and it puts that into there. But variables can only do one thing at a time, so this character can only equal just that elf. It can't equal anything else. But with a list, we can have a variable which equals a number of different things. And we can select the item in the list that we actually want. So we're going to have, if we put square brackets in, and we just write in the name of these three different um, enemies that we want, the square bracket tells Python that this is a list. Now, what makes lists so interesting to use and such a good tool to use is that, like I said, it can contain three different things. In order to select one of these three different things, I need to know the position of them. So the first item in any list is stored at position 0, the second item is stored at position 1, and the next item is stored at position 2. So Python always starts at 0. So enemy list 0 would be the goblin enemy list 1 would be the bat and enemy list troll would be uh, sorry enemy list 3 would be the troll here's how it would look if i was just going to print it out like that so to select the goblin i could just do this enemy list in 0 and that 0 position would link to this here in the list and you might think well what is the point of doing that well the point of actually doing that is we're going to be able to now randomly select an item so instead of actually putting a number in there, we're going to put a random number in there, which the program will select for us, and that will pick the enemy that we're going to actually fight. So I'm going to create another variable, I'm going to call it chance, and it's going to equal random. Again, we've done one of these before, dot rand int, and I need the three different numbers that I need to select from. So I need 0, 1, and 2, because my goblin is 0, bat is 1, troll is 2. So the three numbers are 0 to 2. Okay, so because this is a range, 0, 1, 2, just like before. So that means that now, when this part of this runs, either the number 0, 1, or 2 will be assigned to this chance variable. Now, all I have to do is type in my enemy. The selected enemy is going to equal an, an enemy from the enemy list. So I'm going to type in enemy list. And the position is going to be this chance bit. So it's going to be this random bit here. So that will now select a random enemy for me. Z, either the goblin, the battle, or the troll. And it will store it in this enemy variable here. And that's all we need to do for that, really, apart from the, um, just the last bit, obviously, is that whenever we are defining a function and using something like this, we need to make sure we return it as well. So we're going to return the enemy there as well, so then we can use that in uh, the rest of the program. So the next thing we're going to do is another quite short function. We're going to define the loot. Now the loot 
we don't have anything to go in the brackets here because we haven't actually made any loot yet. But if we had loot, we could make loot with attributes like we do up here, and we could pass it into here, and we could do this a little bit more complicated. But I'm going to keep this very, very simple. So I'm going to create a list again, and it's going to be called loot equals, and then in square brackets, I'm going to write three items of loot. Now, depending on what my character picks up, will affect their attributes. So they will get um, better, or their health will increase, or their strength will decrease, or their defense will increase. And we'll look into that in more detail in a minute. So these are the three different pieces of loot in my list. You can notice here, these three, I've put speech marks around because they're strings. They don't actually exist just yet. Next thing to do is the chance variable for um, uh, the actually this loot function. So I'm just going to call this one loot chance, and then exactly the same as before. There's three positions in this list again: zero, one, and two. So I need to pick a random position. So I do random dot rand int, and then it's between zero and two. So zero, one, or two. And depending on what happens here, it will depend on which of these three items actually gets picked, just like before. Um, so Last thing we have to do is our loot drop variable, and this is going to equal the loot, which is this list here. And in square brackets, what I want in the square brackets is the loot chance. Last thing to do once I've done this is to just like before, just to return the loot drop, so that I can use that in the rest of the program. Okay, so two very straightforward, very short. Um, functions for you there. A way to extend these two functions are if you have more enemies they need to be in this list. So if you have three, five, or however many enemies you have, six, eight different enemies, you need to put all of their names into this list and make sure you spell them exactly the same as is up here. Okay? If you have if you want more items of loot, you can put more items of loot in here just by Pressing comma and speech marks typing the new item, but you must make sure you select you actually put in the new range to select from. So if you have five items of loot, you're going to be random dot random zero two four. So it'll be zero one two three four. We'll get all five items of loot. Okay. So just bear that in mind. If you um, you know if you want ten different items of loot. The range you want here is 0 to 9. Okay, So for the last bit, what you're going to do is you are going to extend this further by adding in more enemies and adding in more pieces of loot. Okay, And if you've done that, then move on to the next item.